everywhere you go now, it's all you see. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's all I've seen so far. Everywhere I turn. Extended memory. Virtual memory. Extended memory. RAM extension. It's the new buzzword. It's everywhere. RAM extension. Everybody wants to tell you that their RAM is extended. It's expanded. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Jeffrey and I want to talk about the scam that is extended memory that is virtual memory that is ram extension any name they call it it's virtually the same thing pun not intended <laughs> because i think i think it's oppo it's either oppo or vivo that started this craze and so so extended memory and uh, memory extension ram extension extended ram and the way they advertised it if you had no idea what it was you would have thought maybe they had discovered the cure for cancer I mean, seriously. So everybody's jumped on the bad wagon now. Everybody. Xiaomi are on it. I'm not sure if Samsung are on it. They haven't really made like a lot of noise about extended memory, but uh, some people have said that some of their latest updates come with the option to extend RAM. Like Techno, uh, that's Transion in Nigeria, Africa, India, and Pakistan has taken it to another level. What is extended RAM? Everybody, everybody extended RAM, extended RAM, extended RAM. So let's look at what is, what is, uh, what is virtual memory? because that's actually the correct term to use. RAM extension, extended RAM, those are all gimmicks, right? Right out, right out the gates now, I am throwing them into the bin. They are all gimmicks, you know, just getting rid of them. All gimmicks, all designed to bamboozle the average user into thinking that they've hit a gold mine. No, they've not, they've not, they've not, absolutely not. So what is virtual memory? Virtual memory is software memory basically that's what it means virtual virtual simply means like you know making something to appear as though it were real that it's virtual but it appears real um for example i could draw a square in the air right now like if i draw a square in the air right now it's a virtual square yes i have drawn a square but it's not exactly real so if i take this my virtual square which i've drawn now and i draw it on a piece of paper then i've gotten this virtual to the physical so it's now like a physical representation what i draw on the paper is a is a physical representation of this square i have drawn i know it's kind of like hard to wrap your head around i have like a whole last post on this which i'll probably link down in the description so when you say virtual memory memory begins as software in the virtual right in the virtual that's how memory begins as so that virtual memory that begins as software needs hardware to support it right so the memory on every smartphone or every computer is basically a function of the software so that software is then mapped onto the hardware so if we've got like two gigs of virtual memory it's going to be addressed to two gigs of ram right because every time you boot up your phone the operating system is always going through these like checks and says oh how much memory is here uh three gigs of ram okay fine i'm going to create three gigs of virtual memory and map it onto the ram Basically, I know this is a kind of like an oversimplified uh, explanation, but I'm trying to get to somewhere here because you cannot understand what memory extension is without understanding virtual memory. So if your smartphone comes and says, oh, I see six gigs of hardware, six gigs of memory, six gigs of RAM hardware on this device. So I am going to create six gigs of virtual memory and then add map it on here, right? Th that's how it works, basically. So software must be supported by hardware. That's how it works. So RAM extension or virtual memory extension means when the um, operating system can be told or can be coded to create extra RAM. Now let's assume that a phone has four gig RAM, for example, and then the the operating system creates six gigs of virtual memory. Obviously, four gigs is going to go to the RAM. Where does the other two gig RAM go to? because software must be supported by hardware. The virtual memory that's been created now, it's, it's in virtual, it's in software. Where is it going to go to? That's, that's basically all RAM extension is. That's basically all virtual memory is. So an extra or rather extra virtual memory is created in addition to the one for the main hardware. And then it is then mapped onto another, um, another type of memory hardware, usually your storage. So if you've got, I'm, I'm going to come over this one more time because I know it's a new concept for some people and it's kind of like technical to wrap your head around. So software must be supported 
by hardware. Now, um, so if you've got, say, for example, four gigs of RAM and your operating system creates six gigs of virtual memory, the extra two gig RAM, are, the extra two gigs RAM of virtual memory is, needs to be supported by hardware. And so that memory is going to be mapped onto your your external sorry your internal storage now the internal storage that is your internal 32 gig 16 gig 64 gig 128 gig so basically your your ram the rather the virtual memory that's supposed to be for ram is now split into two groups one is with the main ram and the other one is with an auxiliary storage the internal storage or for those people some people tend to use their sd cards as part of their main storage it could also be stored there but that one is for that remember memory and storage are not the same thing so now that we've extended our RAM, for example, from 4 gig RAM now to 6 gig RAM, or from 6 gigs of RAM to 8 gigs of RAM, doesn't mean we don't have a much bigger RAM. It would seem so, but it is not actually. Now, I've already made a video about ZRAM. I don't know, depends on who is editing this. It, you could find it here. So, what the extra RAM space is for is for swapping. That's all it is. It's a kind of like a swap space, like ZRAM. It's a swap space. It's not part of your main RAM. So if you have a two gig RAM device, for example, as I have seen with one of the latest techno phones offering memory extension, the same limitations, if you've got two gig RAM, the same limitations of the two gig RAM will still be the same limitations of that two gig RAM. Nothing is going to change. The only difference now is that it is supported by extra two gigs of swap space. Because I saw when they put it two gigs of main RAM plus two gigs extended memory and put it together and they're like more RAM space. No, that is wrong. That is misleading. And that is false advertising. It is not more RAM space. It is absolutely not. If you've got three gigs of RAM and you've got two gigs of swap space or two gigs of virtual memories, extended RAM, whatever they call it, the same limitations of that three gig RAM remain the same limitations. Nothing has changed. What the virtual memory there, like I've explained with ZRAM, is if your memory starts to get filled up and if your phone has ZRAM and you've probably used that up as well, what happens is that if your RAM is filled and you want to, you know, like throw in more apps or you want to open a really large app, what the smartphone does is that it moves the apps in RAM out and then saves them to the extended memory. It just saves them there, right? Whatever the size of the extended or virtual memory has nothing to do with RAM performance. It is just a space where RAM, uh, where uh, the RAM moves out, you know, where the operating system, no, not the RAM, sorry, where the operating system picks apps out of RAM and then saves them outside itself to the virtual memory. So as to create space for new apps to run that's what virtual memory is it has nothing to do with performance it has nothing to do with um uh, uh ram space or anything all that it does is that it creates an external space outside of the main ram where the operating system can then move apps and then store so that it has space basically the apps that are kept in extended or in virtual or in virtual memory if they are needed they cannot be run on virtual memory the operating system has to move them back or has to swap them back into the main RAM before they can run. So this is just a swap space or so external like storage space for running apps. Like the way you have an SD card for, you know, extending your, your smartphone uh, space, for example. But it's just that in this case, the CPUs that need to run on to work apps cannot go to virtual. It cannot work with it. It can only work with the main RAM itself. So whatever space you have on your virtual or on your extended memory, are redundant they are completely redundant so whatever apps are here have to be carried back into the main RAM before they can work so it doesn't necessarily improve processor performance it doesn't necessarily add more RAM all it does is that it gives you swap space now on many devices on many modern smartphones both on the iOS and the Android sides of the fence most of them come with Z RAM or Z RAM that can accurately carry out this swap space thingy that extended memory extended ram can do that's that that's what it is that's the big idea so it's just a gimmick it's not really there's, there's really nothing there the only thing i can the only benefit i can pick out for uh for having extended memory especially for those who have one gig ram or two gig ram or three gig ram devices is you know the fact that you can keep apps like your, your smartphone doesn't have to kill off apps when your memory and your zram is full that's kind of like the only benefit i can pick out your smartphone doesn't have to kill apps all you can all it simply has to do is just move if the ram is getting filled up it just simply moves some and you know saves them 
to the external me to the virtual memory or to the extended RAM, it just swaps it there, and then it has a little bit more breathing room to work around. And then when those apps are needed, they are swapped back. That's kind of like the only benefit. But there are several drawbacks to extended memory. Now, why is that? Since the extended memory or the virtual RAM or the virtual memory is stored on the most of the time, the internal storage, the internal storage is not as fast as the RAM and it is nowhere as fast as the CPUs. So when you want to swap apps back from the extended RAM or from the memory extension back into the RAM, you are going to notice lag. And uh, many people who have been using extended memory have complained, uh, not just to me personally, but I have read it on many forums that it's, it, the phone slows down a bit during app switching. Like for some apps, it swaps quickly. It, you can switch apps quickly, but for most of them, it slows down. And like, yeah, that means the apps that you can switch quickly are those in RAM and the ones that you see a bit of delay, a bit of lag, are the ones in the internal storage or the extended RAM now trying to come back to the main RAM. That is one. First off, delay, lag, um, noticeable lag, actually. The second one is you are going to lose memory. So if for people who have 32 gigs of space or 16 gigs of space, or even 64 in this case, you're going to have to sacrifice maybe one, maybe two, maybe three gigs of RAM. That's mosquito. <laughs> you're going to have to sacrifice maybe one, maybe two, maybe three gigs of RAM. And that's going to remove from storage space that you may have used to save other things. You're going to have to sacrifice it to be used as swap space or extended RAM. And that's two. Three, and this is actually the most important for me, your, S your internal storage has a lifespan. That lifespan is calculated in reads and the number of times that data can be read or write to it. That is read and writes. It has a, a finite number of read and writes. You know, kind of like how, I mean, human beings have a finite number of years to live eventually. Uh, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen a 500 year old person, not in recent memory. No, mythical books, you find them. But in recent memory today, you know, when, when somebody gets to around 100 and he's praised for having lived very long, so because we've got a finite number of years, batteries have a finite number of um, charge cycles around 1,500 these days. It used to be 500, now it's, it's been slightly increased. The same thing can also be said about your internal storage. The internal storage has a finite number of times that you can save data to it and you can re read data from it. Now, using your um, internal storage as swap space means that your CPU or your RAM or your operating system is going to be reading data to and fro, to and fro, to and fro all the time because like when there's no space, the uh, operating system is like, okay, move apps off here, save to internal storage, the extended RAM compartment in the internal storage. So you save there. Oh, we need it, send it back. Save there, send it back. And there is, in a minute, you, do, you have no idea how many times that the operating system is going to do this. Probably hundreds of times, probably even thousands, depends on how much of a heavy user you are. Uh, when these read and writes are happening to and fro, to and fro, to and fro, your internal storage is going to bear the brunt of it. If your if your or if your manufacturer is not using a very standard internal storage or an internal storage with a very long lifespan, you could be inadvertently burning out your internal storage. Probably your internal storage is supposed to last with your phone for maybe I don't know five, six, seven years. Could probably burn out in maybe half the time, probably even less. And, you know, obviously for people who are conversant with how read and writes work, once the read and writes are used up, your internal storage is going to, well, be write protected in many cases. You can no longer be able to save to it. You'd probably be only, only be able to read to it. You can't write to it or save to it anymore. And what's the point of storage when you cannot save to it? I mean, that's why it's storage. You're supposed to save things in there. So um, to wrap up, uh, virtual memory is when a memory from the software is extended beyond the limits of the hardware. That's just all it is. So when it's extended beyond the limits of the available hardware, um, a supplementary form of hardware is going to be needed to save this um, extension to, and mostly it's the internal storage. Uh, so this one acts as a kind of swap space for this uh, for data in the RAM. When the RAM gets filled up, it's the swap space in there is going to be moved to the virtual you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's what it is. It doesn't add to RAM, it doesn't, some people can arguably say it improves performance. I'd say no, arguably it improves multitasking, not performance. And it's going to take a huge toll, not just on your 
internal storage but it's your your smartphone experience as well because of you know like noticeable delay or lags in in app switching and multitasking but i have taken a lot of time on this video i did because i wanted to be able to explain myself very very clearly and i hope i have been able to to do that so please hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think as always my name is jeffrey please do well to like and subscribe and i've got more great content for you i will see you in the next one Bye bye